The gates are open. You go outside. You are in an arena. Not only that you're in an arena, but you have a crowd there. As you turn and look at the four different gods. Ra, an Egyptian god that was wor worshipped by its life. Odin that cared for his people. Zeus, the, the father... <clears throat> The father of of all sons, including the famous Hercules and Danu, the I don't know too much about her, but she's I think a goddess, of some sort, Mother Nature, if you can say that. But as you enter, you can do all these challenges, and they progress, and you have this maximum crowd affinity that if you please the crowd, they give you drops, and if you don't please them, they'll give you something terrible. The thing is, like, 9 is already a perfect map, besides what it was at launch. It it was so great, every time you walk out of the arena, and look at all all the beautiful details that Trek worked hard for. 9 should have been a DLC, but I w I'm okay with it as having it as another map besides Voyage. But each time you go through different gods, you must face a champion. A champion that represents each god. To not also please the crowd, but also please the gods themselves. As you slaughter each and every one of God, Zeus, Odin, Danu, and Ra. Their gods are finally pleased. And finally you get down the pack a bunch to order to put the heads of the champions in order to unlock it. I find that to be really not that hard and really touching to... Touching, because not only you'll get points, you also bring up your, excuse me, crown infinity. You know, the the whole purpose here makes perfect sense. Right after the cruise ship, you come to this cave, take a vapor, and you live the lives of the ancestors of Shaw, Bruno, Scarlet, and my boy, Diego. <laughs> But um, as we live the bleh, as we live the ancestors of these characters, we know what we must do. That we had to prevent the order of the order, which is the pri the priests, the priest guys, or priest guys. I think I think that's what pre. I don't know. I don't know if the order or the priest guys, but I'm just gonna keep calling priest guys. But those guys. We had to um, prevent them from accessing the central artifact with the two piece of which Scarlet used to have, but it was uh, but it was <clears throat> taken away from the guy in Voyage. But as that arises, we see how back in that time, during the Roman or any other ages, we don't get a specified time that they had technology of that power to order to transform people into the undead and people into black fathers. I find that touching. And we get to see the antagonist to be the leader, the head leader of the order, which in my guessing must have started the order or the priest dudes uh, generation for a pretty long time. Because as we progress from voice to to um nine, we see that the order has been there for a long, pretty long time, but we don't know how to stop it. Maybe the goal that is not only to rescue Scarlet's father, but also to prevent the order to take over the whole world, and preventing them to turn people into zombies, so they don't have to, like I said, excuse me, ruin the ruin the whole or take over the world. As the Easter goes, it actually makes perfect sense. You must complete each challenges for the gods to please them and to order and to to grab the key that which Odin gives you and to unlock the cages to enter in the boss fight. Where we have to not have to fight one, but two freaking elephants. One big and, or not big. One regular and one even matter. I find this boss fight challenging, but not that too much challenging. It creates a perfect balance when you have to shoot the gladiators at riding the Riding the elephants, even though it's better to do that instead of shooting the elephants to weaken its points. And now, as we defeated the Fury, and the Nine, I'm assuming, is the big elephant of the gods. We don't know who 
it is. But I'm assuming that nine is a challenger instead of nine of how many times the people have def have tried to defeat the great power power powerful god or goddess or whoever the challenge could be. I find this ending to be pretty extraordinary as we defeated the nine or the furies the two elephants i'm assuming we have um somewhat prevented something from happening during that back time and have our characters have their head slices cut off which was kind of flipping us up as they freaking lived and now we die but the thing is through all of this this is all an illusion after we did this, our characters might as well wake up and continue forward on their journey. Not only to rescue Scarlet's father, but also to prevent the Order from taking over everything. I find this pretty... I find everything to be touching. The gameplay, the gameplay, the gun, the guns, the axe, or not the axe, the friggin' shields and all the specials. Everything works all good in this map and the only good well not only but only good training spots that spawn or besides the gods if you're that well enough i think nine is going to be the more memorable maps of call of duty history if we take a look back at one of the best maps that we ever had it's it's might as well be at least shinonumo shinonumo or garakovi darizen kino Moon, Five, Classify, Mob of the Dead, Buried, Origins, we have those maps, and Nine, for right now, will always be the number one map in Black Ops 1 Zom Black Ops 4, heh, in Black Ops 4 Zombies, due to how everything works all good, and everything makes perfectly sense in all cases, Nine should be one of the maps that's going to be nominated for best map in certain games. Because if we take five games, including one at war, we can put nine right now as the number one game contender representing Black Ops 4. Because I feel like nine is the best repetition, repetition, representation of the good zombies map they ever had. The Black Ops 3 could be debatable. Black Ops 2 it could either be buried or not buried. Origins or Mob of the Dead. And Black Ops 1, <laughs> you already know what kind of maps we're going to be debating about. But L innovated from World at War. And we had great maps. And 9 will forever be one of the number one better maps that we're going to have in Black Ops 4 zombies throughout this one year journey. We're going to have a track. I hope. Well, the DLCs, it's going to relate to how the Order is going to either prevent or excel. They're going to take it over the world. We shall see throughout the whole DLCs, see what happens. But right now, 9 is the number one map in Black Ops 4 Zombies that everybody should play. That's my personal opinion. That's how I feel about this map. It's the number one map that should be represent as the black ops 4 zombies right now but yeah hope you guys enjoy and my name is finna ghost 239 let me know your thoughts and opinions about nine and what do you think about the map if it's a good map or if it's a bad map i would like to hear why and anyways guys i hope you guys have a wonderful day and bye